Are you looking to power up your Synology NAS for running more applications, faster file access, and overall a general higher level of performance? Well, I am, so we're going to do that here. Long been a Synology NAS user. I have my DS1821 Plus right here. And as long as I've used Synology products, one of the things that I've never done is actually put some upgradability into them. So nowadays, most NAS units actually let you upgrade the RAM from the sometimes modest amount that comes with them out of the box. They also support SSD drives, M.2 style SSD drives that can be used as read and sometimes write caches as well, speeding up file IO. I've been using the DS1821 Plus for a while without any of these upgrades and I'm finding that the family is using the NAS more and more. My kids are getting older, they're doing more computer driven work, so we have multiple people now accessing the NAS and I wanna do more with it. I wanna set up Homebridge. I'd like to be able to, might be able to use it as a camera video recorder storage coming up. So I wanna answer for myself, what kind of performance value add, value benefit does doing some hardware upgrades to the NAS take? So I wanted to make this video, talk about what I'm doing and we'll go through the process of both installing the upgrades to a Synology NAS as well as some of the software setup and the things behind it. So first off, what am I putting in here? Well, one thing to keep in mind is Synology does publish a compatibility list for RAM and SSD drives and, and other elements that you may attach or include in their hardware systems. I definitely recommend looking at those compatibility lists. The other thing to keep in mind is that they do actually offer Synology branded memory uh, and drives, but I found those to be considerably more expensive than some of the other options that are available out there uh, so I did some research, I did my due diligence, and this is what I've come up with for what I'm going to put in. I think corroborating uh, on Reddit and other owners discussion places to make sure that other folks are successfully using these brands, makes, and models of equipment in their Synologies, um, as well as I believe the SSD actually was on the compatibility list. The RAM, however, was not, but I was able to find, again, reference to multiple folks commenting that they use this brand, they use this type of memory uh, in their NASs, and it's working fine. So what I have here is ATEC uh, Premium Memory. It's a 32 gigabyte kit, two times 16 gig. Now the NAS itself comes with a little bit of a paltry nowadays, I would say, four gig of RAM installed. There's two slots, it's accessible from underneath the unit. We'll go through the process of putting these in there. One thing to keep in mind is you do wanna make sure, um, even if you're not working directly off the compatibility list, you do wanna buy the same type of memory uh, that would be definitively stated as compatible with your NAS. So for the 1821 Plus here, I have DDR4, 3200 megahertz, uh, PC4, 25600, and most importantly, it's ECC memory. Now, we don't usually use ECC memory in our regular computers. You're not going to find ECC memory, generally speaking, in laptops and things like that. But ECC memory has special error code correction elements to it that make it more reliable for the type of memory usage that happens inside of a unit like this. So that's the recommendation and definitely stick to it. You'll find that there's not as much ECC memory available on the market as there is non-ECC, and it may cost a little bit more, but this 32 gigabyte pack, two pack of 16 gig sticks was about a hundred bucks uh, right off of Amazon. Now on the SSD side, I have a Western Digital Black. This is an SN770. This is the newer model of the drive. I believe that the prior model was the SN750, I think is the right, the right model number, was on the compatibility list for the NAS. That has been discontinued. The 770 is the new model. And I have a one terabyte unit here. Now there are two M.2 slots inside this specific Synology. And if you use dual drives, you can raid them, you can do some more advanced things like them. All I was looking to get out of the SSD is essentially a read cache. I'm not too worried about write speeds or write caching. That's where rating the SSDs becomes important because information may be stored on those drives and then you wouldn't want to have something being written to the NAS, exist on one SSD, then that SSD fails. Now you have like a data integrity problem going on. But I'm just looking for the read performance. I want to be able to access all kinds of small files as fast as possible when we're scrolling through or thumbing through uh, folders that might have hundreds of family photos looking for specific ones and, and use cases and applications like that. So despite there being two M.2 slots in there, I'm doing just one drive and I went with a one terabyte size. One other thing to keep in mind, 
And the reason I kind of did this as a combo video, technically I could have done the RAM in one, I could have done the SSD in another, um, is these things go together. So as you add caches, SSD caches to the NAS, it occupies or requires a certain amount of memory. So if you're putting big SSD cache storage inside the NAS, make sure that you're also upgrading the RAM accordingly. There's a formula uh, that Synology provides to have an idea based on the size of your SSD cache, how much memory that's going to occupy, and you can adjust and calculate accordingly. I'm not even necessarily worried about the, the results of that calculation as the one terabyte is not a huge SSD and 32 gigabytes is the largest amount of memory that the NAS supports per its specs. So I just went all the way. Plenty of room for these things to work together. Plenty of memory will be left over to run more packages and applications. And again, more uh, RAM to optimize system performance. So I'm gonna put the RAM in first. We'll put the SSD in second. First things first, always shut it down before you unplug a network attached storage device. Hold that power button for a little while and it'll go through its sequence. It'll shut itself down. All right, here we go. So I'll spare you the unboxing of opening up the SSD and the memory. There's really nothing to that. And we shouldn't need anything to do both of these installs other than uh, a screwdriver. Now the memory is gonna go right here in this compartment. There's two screws. I do have my handy magnetic tipped Phillips and flathead little screwdriver kit that I keep in my rack. Handy and accessible. Pop one little screw out. Second little screw out. And we should find one memory so dim in there. We're gonna pry, pry it apart real gently. Pop this out. And that's our one included four gigabyte RAM stick. So we've got two new the A datas that we're gonna put in. And I did touch some metal things here in the room, did my best to try to ground myself and protect my electronics. Slide that right in there, clip it down. Easy peasy, that's one. Looking for the guides, these are keyed so there's no real chance or risk of putting them in the wrong way. Clip those in, clip those in. Now there won't be any configuration to the memory aspect of this. Uh, it, it'll just, provided the memory works, uh, the, the NAS will just start up and it'll have that memory usable and accessible. For the SSD drive, in order to set up the drive cache and all that, we will have to do some software config, which I will cover uh, in just a moment. We'll go ahead and get this screwed back down. Now it would have been nice if, I suppose the SSD drive could have gone in the same spot but it actually goes inside. We're gonna to have to pull all the drives out um, in order to access that bit of installation piece. So that's, that's the end of that, basically. So we'll try and do the SSD from a perspective where I can actually show it. We have to pull all of the drives out and I'm gonna very carefully make sure that I set these down in an order that I have a very easy reference to know which ones are going into which spot. Now I am only running five drives in here. A lot of room for expansion, a lot of room for extra storage in the future, should I need it. Now the SSDs are on this side. Get one more little tool that I have. So the SSD trays are right here uh, just on the left, there's two. The number one is in the front. Number two is in the back. There's no screws, which is which is nice because it'd be kind of hard to get in there with the screwdriver. But essentially, all we need to do is clip this drive right in here. So we're going to slide in the base, and that's the clip. And there we go. So there's no recommended. I've, I saw no recommendation for any cooling or anything needed for the drive. I did not buy a drive with a heat sink. You want to be careful because the, any depth of a heat sink may impede that first drive tray going in there. Uh, but we are, this does have big fans on the back blowing from the back forward so there is cool air that will be rushing over the SSD. And then very easily we'll just put each one of these drive 
sleds back in, push them in, clip them down. Again, paying attention to put each drive back in the same location that it came from, just to avoid any possible entanglements for the integrity of the array and the storage volumes that are set up on the unit. So that's that, all our hardware is installed. I'm gonna go ahead and get it back in the rack. All right, so let's take care of the software side of this. First off, I did wanna show that if you go into control panel and we go to the info center, that we see the total physical memory of the NAS is now showing 32 gigabytes. Again, no configuration, no special setup, nothing really needed there. It just, if you have compatible RAM and everything works like it's supposed to, the amount of memory will be properly reported there. So the other thing we need to do then is set up that cache drive. So we're gonna go into Storage Manager. And if we look in Storage Manager, we can see uh, I have again five drives populated out of the eight. We can see now here the built-in M.2 slot is showing green in slot one. So the drive was recognized as being present. If I go down to the list of hard drives and SSDs, I can see M.2 drive one, SanDisk, uh, Western Digital Black, SN 770, one terabyte showing green, showing healthy. We're good to go. Now the cache drives are actually attached to the storage pool. I have one storage pool, one volume, essentially on one storage pool in my NAS. All five drives are part of that uh, one pool using Synology Hybrid RAID with one drive of fault tolerance. And what we can do here is I'm gonna go up to create. This is actually my first time doing this as well, so we should be able to easily follow the wizard. I wanna create an SSD cache and we can see the SSD cache enhances performance uh, where input output operations require frequent access to randomly placed data. Again, lots of small files, excellent for large photo libraries, hopefully. Uh, we're gonna mount this on volume one. It's the only volume in the NAS. So important note that the caches are not just generally used by the NAS. They have to be attached to a storage volume, a storage set. So we're gonna mount this on volume one, hit next. Uh, we see a new SSD cache group will be created. You can allocate it, uh, its cache group capacity to create a cache on volume one. Now here we can select read write or read only. So if you only have one SSD, you can only make a read only drive cache. You have to have two drives and they do some rating and, and some fault tolerance between them to be able to do a read and a write cache. I'm, I'm, I'm happy just with the read cache for my use. So. Uh, and I can't select the read write anyway, so we're going to go ahead and do read only. Uh, RAID type, we're not going to really have a RAID type here. There's only one option, basic, which essentially means uh, no RAID. The drive fault tolerance is zero. If we would have had two drives in there, we would have had a choice. Basically, I think it can either like do a RAID, RAID zero or RAID one. You can mirror them or stripe them. But if you're going for fault tolerance and you're doing multiple SSDs and M.2 slots anyway, you would uh, you would have them as a uh, have them running as copies of each other, but no RAID basic. Select the drive that we want in the cache. I'm going to go ahead and pick the one that I put in specifically for this purpose. Hit next. Please note the following regarding the drive. It's not on the compatibility list. Well, the the prior generation was. And I feel very confident that this is going to work without any trouble. We'll go ahead. Available capacity 931 uh, gigabytes because of course it's a one terabyte drive but you have 1024 versus 1000 when it comes to bit byte conversions and so on. Uh, and we can see required system memory. So that's what I was referring to earlier. There's 400 kilobytes of RAM required for every gigabyte of SSD cache. So it's really not much actually in that regard. So a one terabyte cache is gonna occupy uh, about 363 megabytes of RAM. We put 32 in there, got plenty to go. So we're gonna confirm. We're going to apply. All data on the newly added drive will be erased. Uh, yep, there's no data on it, so we're good to go. And we'll see, I presume that this operation should literally take a matter of seconds. There we go, loading, loading, and we're in. Um, so now the volume, the storage pool, uh, is showing the original mechanical hard drive array uh, that we had there, and now attached to it is SSD cache group number one. Again, basic, without data protection, 931 gigabytes allocated in the volume, the volume view as well has a healthy volume using 10 terabytes out of possible 40, just shy of 42, and the SSD cache is attached. And that's it. Now that the NAS will use it, cool that we can get some metrics and some details about how often it's used. 
and I can go about my business now uh, using the NAS, hopefully in a super powered up mode. Pretty cool. So there we go, pretty straightforward. Um, I will have Amazon links to both of those, the RAM and the SSD down in the description, affiliate links. If you're looking for some upgrades for your NAS, particularly a Synology, maybe check those makes and models of uh, equipment out. Now measuring the actual performance improvement will be a little tougher. I'm not gonna try to do that. There's not, I think, a specifically objective way to account for the, the increased performance, multiple people using it. So I'm gonna be keeping an eye on, on my regular use cases for the NAS, how the family is using it, as I get it set up to do a couple of other things in the household, and we'll see if I notice any tangible benefits, particularly, again, browsing the large photo libraries and doing like the larger scale file access of many amounts of small files. That's the main thing that I'm looking for out of it. But pretty straightforward to do. You don't have to be a super techie uh, engineering type, I think, to make an upgrade like that. And the software side setup for the SSD cache was pretty straightforward and simple as well. I think NASs are an excellent addition to any, to any home technology setup. Really important to make sure that you're properly protecting important digital assets, files, and information, and family history, and other things that you may have. The cloud is great, but local storage definitely works as a supplement and works in tandem with using cloud services to keep information as well, in my opinion. Multiple backups in multiple locations, some of which are under your deliberate and specific control. Um, and I think it's important to note for reference, I may have forgot to mention earlier in the video, that SSD drive was on the order of about $90, again, about $100 for the memory. So all in here, pretty significant upgrade, hardware upgrade to the NAS for under 200 bucks. Of course, that's all made possible by your support, uh, essentially using Techthusiasm revenue to fund the technology things that I do, that I talk about, that I cover here on the channel. So thank you very much for that. If the video helped you, please leave a super thanks, leave a PayPal Venmo tip, become a channel member, or more importantly, if you would, please shop with my affiliates, Audio Advice, Amazon, Best Buy, Target, Newegg, and a whole a bunch of others. All the links are down in the description below. Otherwise, please do all that regular YouTube stuff. Like, subscribe, hit the bell, share the video, leave a comment, let's discuss what are you doing for local NAS storage? What do you like? How big of one do you have? Have you upgraded yours? with RAM or SSD drive caching. Did you think it was worth it? <clears throat> Did you realize a performance benefit out of doing so? Share your experience in the comments and let's discuss. If you have any questions, ask them there as well. Thanks so much for watching. Come on back for a whole bunch more home theater, home technology, tech enthusiastic discussion and fun.